see how your own voice manifests an infinite number of shapes and frequencies. That means we have the infinite capacity to create. Ancient civilizations knew all this and they used and understood sound and they used sound and frequency as a source of energy. Atomic model that we get taught at school, that's a complete lie and a myth. It's a theory. So Tesla is telling us that everything and the magnificence of creation is based on toroidal fields. Nikola Tesla said that sound is the source of everything in this interview in 1928. This is what he says. And in sacred geometry, we have the creation process, that's the six days of creation, or the word, sound frequency, we have the six aspects of Om, and the Omani Padme Hum, we have the six aspects of the all-seeing eye of Horus, all resonance ratio frequencies, harmonics, and we realize that sound is the source of all creation, remember, after all it says, God said, let there be light, that itself becomes important, because it's sound that comes before light. And the principles of resonance are that everything vibrates, as I said, in, at its own frequency. And that's obviously also relevant to our own bodies. Every cell, every atom, every organ, every muscle, every part of your body has its own vibrational frequency. And if those parts of your body are not in coherent harmonic resonance, they are in dissonance, which means they're in dis-ease. And dis-ease is disease, sick. That's why we get sick, because we're not coherent. We're not resonating with our environment and even within our own bodies. And this is all beautifully shown in the Hans Jenny's um, spectacular work in the 60s, which he called Cymatics. But it's also the human voice that has infinite creation capacity. It's when we look at the cymoscope, and I now see that you can get a cymoscope app on your phone. So you can actually start download that cymoscope app if you can and then you can actually see how your own voice manifests an infinite number of shapes and frequencies that means we have the infinite capacity to create So sound is the precursor to an electromagnetic universe. That's really important because it's sound that came first. Much more about that. Sound inspires religious symbols. When you drill into some of these still images of the cymatic patterns, you find this, the source of religious symbols, this beautiful cross in a circle. And you realize that those that first drew the crosses in ancient times knew exactly what they were doing. And they knew that sound was the source of creation. And that's why their symbols and logos look like this. They weren't designed by ad agencies like the logos companies are designed today. They knew what they were doing. So the sound and resonance, sound creates lights, sound levitates, boils water, creates DNA, heals um, and destroys pathogens. Sound moves beyond the speed of light. There's a thing called hypersound and Caesar technology, which we're going to talk a lot more about. Sound makes things invisible. Sound energizes the water and the air, water we drink and the air we breathe. Otherwise, we would not survive if we just breathe air without it actually being energized. And sound is a precursor to the electromagnetic universe or precursor to electromagnetism. Ancient civilizations knew all this and they used and understood sound and they used sound and frequency as a source of energy. Sound and frequency used, it was used to control and manipulate humanity in ancient times like it is today in modern times. The ancients did not waste their time with insignificant carvings of doodles. When they carved things into rock, they were very specific with the information they left for us. And it seems that they took control of humanity with what I've recognized as cone-shaped tools. And this is why subconsciously when I found those cone-shaped tools scattered around the mountains of South Africa, close to the stone circles, I started to collect them and photograph them because I knew subconsciously this was connected to our origins, to 
advanced technology and to how we've been manipulated. This is very important, these images of them, these bird-headed beings and these winged beings holding these cones and doing something with these weird cone-shaped tools. It seems to me that they were controlling not only the pineal gland, uh, but also the DNA, so-called tree of life, of sound and frequency. Notice this weird wristwatch of this being and this cone. See this cone? At first you look at this and you think, oh, it's just a muscle. No, it's not a muscle. It's a cone. There's your cone running into this weird wristwatch, right? And notice that wristwatch has got a bunch of little cones facing the center. One of the secrets of the universe think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And that's exactly what this is all about. This is a picture of an electron. An electron riding a beam of light. It's really quite a spectacular image. Can you see anything physical there? You see a particle? No, no. You just see ripples in a pond. Like when you just dropped a pebble in a pond. You see waves in a pond. We don't see a particle. We just see resonance and frequency. Nikola Tesla said that sound is the source of everything. In this interview in 1928, this is what he says. On the whole subject of matter, Dr. Tesla holds views that are startlingly original. He disagrees with the concept or the, the accepted atomic theory of matter and does not believe in the existence of an electron as pictured by science. Tesla also tells us of the importance of 3, 6 and 9. If you only knew the magnificence of 3, 6 and 9, you would know the key to the universe. Well, anyone that studies 3, 6 and 9 or vortex, mass or toroidal fields will know that 3, 6 and 9 are the fundamental numbers of vortex, mass or toroidal fields. So Tesla is telling us that everything and the magnificence of creation is based on toroidal fields. This is really important. Even Albert Einstein had a problem with the existence of the electron. And he says that the electron, based on the current understanding of science and physics, the electron cannot exist because it completely contradicts our current understanding of the basic principles of science and physics. And then Edlitz Kalman, the guy that built Coral Castle in South Florida, he makes it very clear in his book that millions of people all over the world are being fooled by the non-existing electron. And he goes into much more details. What's going on here? What's going on here that we've been completely manipulated and lied to about everything? And the bigger the lie, the more we incline to believe it. Dr. Manju Samantha Lawton, who I actually met here in Manchester in 2013, wrote this incredible book, which I suggest you read, called Punk Science. It's an awesome book. It reads like a novel. You won't put it down once you start. In which everything manifests in toroidal fields, toroidal shapes and toroidal fields. And you start realizing that everything in creation manifests in a toroidal field. Everything. Sound manifests as a torus, and this is why every beat of our heart creates this very powerful toroidal field around our body. This is why we measure magnetic and electromagnetic fields around our body, because of not only the beating heart and the sound of the beating heart, but also the movement of the blood through our body, creating toroidal fields, the toroidal shape of sound. Every sound frequency, every vowel, every letter of the alphabet has its own specific toroidal field. And sound, and the toroidal fields that are created by sound, is also how scalar technology works. Scalar waves are actually toroidal fields. Toroidal shape of color. Colors have toroidal shapes. There are no particles. Everything just originates in a toroidal field of resonance. So an electron is just simply a coherent resonance in a toroidal field. And that applies to everything else. The electron is a torus, the atom is a torus, and I just recently had uh, Professor Ilya Lakitsevich in South Africa at the Ubuntu Festival, and he's written dozens of articles on the toroidal fields of atoms, not the atomic model that we get taught at school. That's a complete lie and a myth. It's a theory. Here's a molecular torus of a carbon monoxide. Pay attention to this. I just found this today. We amended this this morning. Uh, look at that structure there, the toroidal field of, of the uh, molecular torus of the carbon monoxide molecule. And then I found the fact that magnetic fields actually cone-shaped. And look at the image, pay attention to this image here, and then the image of a, of a magnetic field. And you see the comparison, the fact that toroidal fields and magnetic fields have the same kind of structure. Because that's what it is. Sound creates magnetic fields. Magnetic fields create toroidal fuel. They're all toroidal, so they're inextricable. They're inseparable. The solar system is a torus, a toroidal field. 
Our galaxy is a toroidal field. Basically, we live in a fractal, multidimensional toroidal nature of reality. This is an image by the brilliant scientist Alex Gray, which probably resembles our reality most accurately. This infinite fractal toroidal field. Magnetic fields create toroidal shapes. You can see it very clearly, even just if you put iron filings. And now we get to the real crux of it. Magnetism manifests as a toroidal field. Sound is a toroidal. Sound is a torus. Color is a torus. Everything is a bloody torus. And so is a magnetic field. This is a perfectly balanced, fully magnetic field spectrum. And this is how our nature of reality is manifested in this world of ours, in this existence of ours. It is, we are told that it's the, sorry, it's the sound of the earth that creates the magnetic fields. It is not the molten iron core as we've been told. There is no molten iron core at the center of the earth. Because even in there lies a, is, is a lie, because molten iron doesn't have a magnetic field. So there can't be molten iron at the, at the center of the earth. So it's clearly the sound of the earth, and we know that the sound of the earth resonates all the time, it rings like a bell, and it's that sound that creates the magnetic field around the earth. But the magnetic torus is a perfectly balanced thing. It pushes and it pulls from both sides. It's the same force moving in the opposite directions. It's not positive or negative. It's the same field. It moves in the opposite direction. So even the concept of positive and negative is a lie and deception. It's just the same energy that works in the opposite direction. In fact, the yin-yang sign is most likely a flattened 2D perspective of a balanced toroidal field. It's very important to understand the toro toroidal fields and then at the center of the toroidal field we have the accretion disk. So the sound of the earth is a problem because we have half a magnetic field floating around in space, not a fully balanced magnetic field. We have north on the one side and south on the other. That can't be, that's not possible. That is not a balanced magnetic torus. It's a half a magnetic torus. And there's a big problem with that. So what's going on? Because balanced magnetic fields, a balanced complete magnetic torus looks something like this. We've got these toroidal fields moving inwards with an accretion disk at the center of it. Torus equator plane emits energy and matter in a disk, just like our solar system emits matter in a disk. And you start seeing, when you study this, once again, NASA tells us all this information. It keeps talking about solar disks and how new stars are created emitting in solar disks in these made out of water. When you start going into this, it talks about how water creates these solar disks. And here's a, here's a most detailed image of a young star and its planetary disk being formed. Everything's created in a disk, the galactic disks. The galactic torus has a galactic disk. We talk, talk about the galactic equator or the galactic plane. And, well, that's the galactic disk in which all the matter lies in the galaxy. We have thousands of images of galactic disks floating around in space. And we don't think that's weird. We're completely okay with that. It's just part of a giant galactic torus. We just see the disk part of it. We don't see the other energetic things about it. Every now and then we do. We use special technology to visualize things. We see the torus. And we start reading more about the dynamics of galactic disks and so forth. You can take this right down the rabbit hole when you start looking into this. And then, fortunately, through the discovery of the ferrolens cell, we start to be able to see what magnetic fields look like, or what a magnetic torus actually looks like. When you put a magnet under a ferro cell lens, you start seeing the beautiful flow of the energies. And I suggest that this is what ley lines really are. Ley lines are actually misunderstanding or misconception by Mr. Lay, who first discovered it, after whom ley lines are called, he only really discovered the magnetic fields of the toroidal nature of our reality and our world. And when you bring a magnet close to a ferrofluid, this is what happens. Beautiful cones pop up out of the ferrofluid, and you start seeing the effect of magnets and sound on the effect of nature, how sound and magnetism affects nature. And when you take a ferrocell lens and you put it over a speaker magnet, you get these beautiful cones pointing at the center. Does it remind you of something? Yes. It reminds me of this dude's wristwatch here. And the cone he's holding in his hand. And we start seeing how important the cones, the torus toroidal fields and the cones are in advanced technology and understanding the laws of nature. Sound, magnetism, cone-shaped tools and toruses. That's what this is all about.
really deeply encoded in the ancient civilization's knowledge. If you like this video and you want to see more amazing content, go ahead and check out the next video on our channel.